Do you love old cars and trucks? Join us on Bring Them Back to Life, where we search the salvage yards and backyards of America to find that gold mine of a parts car or that restorable gem in the rough. Come with us down memory lane as we elevate the status of our salvage yards to outdoor museums of automotive history. Here is my 1956 Chevrolet convertible. The damage on the car was from the rear of the front tire to the front of the rear tire only. So it can be repaired with mostly sheet metal. And this car is going to be hauled to my friend's house, John Baker. The replacement door is hanging on the hinges and the technician is pulling that cowl back into the location that it should be for everything to align. Each click is about a thousand pounds of pressure. As you see how much pressure was on that, that could have been very, very bad. <laughs> Gently set the door shell off to the side. Our good friends at Sherman Parts supplied us with some nice parts here. Full complete half floor pan. It's obviously a little bigger than me. As you folks can see, we got quite a bit of work cut out for us. Literally. <laughs> and a rocker panel. Looks really nice quality parts, nice and thick. And here it looks like we have some rocker panels. Outer rockers. Outer rockers. One for this 56 convertible and another one for another project. And here have the side panel, the quarter panel. So right here. Right here, as you folks can see, I'll give you a better shot in a second. So go on like so. A little cotton welding, fabricating, and look like a car again. That's further on in the video though, for you folks at home. Alright, today we're going to remove the box out of the cow panel and we're going to cut out all the old broken down parts here and install some new stuff. So let's watch your eyes and we'll get some sparks going. Always be careful just to cut in a straight line, you don't want to damage any metal. original factory shape. So our panels fit a little better. You don't want to heat too much if this whole metal it don't take very much. Gently heat the metal. Always look out for fires because it is old and there is stuff lurking in the, the cracks and crevices, mouse nests, or as you can see the undercoating is a little flammable. You just want to get that nice and warm. Remember, not too much because you overstretch the metal. And if you overstretch the metal, you will not have a good day. Now we're going to hit the steel. As you can see, it's pulling out slowly. Doesn't take much, folks. Just a little bit. 
Yeah, remember this car is a 1956, not a 1999. If you get a good view in here, you can see that's going to start pulling apart. You never want to heat right where you're directly hitting. Always heat above so the metal pulls and expands so it'll work good. See if we can get a shot of that while we hit it. So you can see this straightening right out. Alright. Now what we're going to do is take a dolly and a body hammer. So you folks take five. I'm going to get some new tools and be back in a minute. So you wound up buying a, what was a farm here and then uh, bring, yes. bringing in the Chevelles and yep. Cutlasses. Uh, Skylocks, wherever you could find them, and uh, Norm told me you've gone as far as uh, a couple hundred miles away to get the right cars. Oh yes, yes, yep. You can. Uh, there's a limit to how far you can go, but uh, we uh, we go pretty good circle to uh, gather up cars. Uh, Eric also told me that uh, if anybody's selling a collection that they've started or they're, st they're going to not restore anymore, you'll you'll buy a whole lots of 50 cars, huh? We we've we've done purchases that big. Uh, I can remember one time over in Siler City, uh, we were uh, we actually took a tractor trailer with an eight car hauler out there, the rented it from a friend, and uh, some of the cars had no front suspension, and we had the farm tractor from the neighbor. We had borrowed a farm tractor, and the boys uh, pulled the uh, cars that had no suspension onto the uh, eight car hauler with the uh, cable and a cumul or a snatch block. And uh, half the town of Siler City turned out to watch the affair, but uh, they got it done. The uh, car hauler was loaded and all eight cars came home. Say you like old cars. Say you like old trucks If you've been looking for one And you've had no luck well, come along with us A trip down memory lane On a walk about You'll be glad that you came Been looking for one and you've had no love. Well, come along with us, a trip down memory lane. On a walk about, you'll be glad that you came. Say you like old trucks If you've been looking for one And you've had no love well, come along with us A trip down memory lane On a walk about You'll be glad that you came Okay, what's next? All right, now we're gonna bend the lip straight, as you can see here. The purpose of bending this lip straight is so we can try to flatten the metal behind it. Now what we're gonna do is use two of my favorite tools. It's a hammer, and this is a oblong dolly. As you can see, I have two, nice textured. What these are gonna achieve is to keep the metal flat on a beaten back path to try to straighten out what little bit of metal is left. Because on this rail, we want this rail straight as possible. The only way to achieve this is to beat it straight and then bend it back to its 
curvature. So take a deep close peek here. What I'm doing is beating all of it flat. You can see it's nice and smooth versus all rounded out and sharp edges. Keep in mind, folks, that pliable metal is very, very, very pliable. You can shape it any way you want. You just have to be very careful. Now I'm going to use a flat edge, a little bit flatter on the bottom side. As you can see that come right to life. And the purpose of making this flat here is when we bend it, the contour, our drip edge here, all on the edge, has to fit nice and snug and straight. Now to achieve this, we can use this piece of metal here. Once we have straightened, you can see it fits like so up top, on the bottom. Then we flatten this, then we bend it straight. Bending it straight will give us the ability to put down in here, and weld straight to the back side, and then the front outer panel, which you'll see later on in the video, goes to the piece we're now straightening. So it'll give us a nice body line with a contour. Hopefully some good results. I'm going to switch to a bigger die so we have a little more contact area. Now keep in mind, doing this, we are stretching the metal out. And stretching the metal is a good thing. If you take a look in here, you can see all the old rivets we have to grind. And this, once I flatten this edge, we'll take a grinder and grind all that flush and then bend the lip back and contour it. Now on the top, we're only going to go as high as the hinge. Because you don't want to bend the factory seam right here that splits open. You want to try to get right up to that hinge and that's as far as you want to stop. And then this piece stays contoured and you weld down. So a few more good hits. See like so, that goes right back. Alright, the good part about a bent wedge is we can get in to get to hard to reach places and factory curves. Alright, looks like we're ready to start grinding. Give you guys a close up here of what it looks like now, and then after we grind it down, we're going to achieve a nice grind all the way down, nice and flush, and then we're going to roll it. We're going to start here on the top, and we're going to proceed to work our way down. We'll see if we get some nice shiny metal out of this old girl. Now we're going to take the edge of our dolly and we are going to try to bend our drip rail back. This part takes some patience. Back in the shape. 
once you get it kind of contoured, that is when you will use your other dolly and we can flatten it right out. Use the flat edge of our dolly here. You can see it fits like so. It will key that nice flat look with your one end. Now for tighter areas, we turn the dolly and It's almost perfectly straight back to factory specs, if you guys can see all the way around. We'll give you some good light over here. All this will be hidden by paint and primer once we're done. If we lose the hinges, they're all out in the open. Good time to take advantage of doing that. Let's try to roll our back panels here. What I'm doing is pulling the metal away from the hinge. Right from the factory, it's very, very tight on the lower hinge always because that's where it bends down the contour, so we're trying to pull it away so when we weld it, it'll push back into place. All these little holes right here, as you guys can see, were from the old metal being bent back. Now that we've reshaped and rebent the metal, the holes have moved out, which gives us new flat, flush, uh, surface so we can weld the new body panels on once we fitted the panels to the door and new hinge pod but that'll be a little later in the show say you like old power Say you like a truck. If you've been looking for one and you've had no love, well, come along with us. A trip down memory lane. On a walk about, you'll be glad that you came.
say you like old cars, I say you like old trucks. If you've been looking for one and you've had no luck, well, come along with us. A trip down memory lane on a walkabout, you'll be glad that you came.